In this video, we'll discuss the friction between two objects and the free body diagram. This is part of the dynamics of motion. So, friction is actually defined as the force between two objects. So, if one is moving, then there must be a friction on the two objects. And the friction is always opposite to the motion of the particle. So, if the particle is moves towards right, then the friction is towards left. It is always an opposing force due to motion. So, it is actually the resistance. No? That's why we hard to, to pull an object in horizontal or vertical or any position. It's because of the contact. Because contact provides friction. Now, there are two kinds of friction. We have the static friction and we have the kinetic friction. So, friction, static friction is actually the friction between the object to object from rest. So, if you attempt to move that, gradually increase your force, then uh, the force that holds between the objects is actually the static friction. Now, when the particle moves in, in one surface, then there is another friction we call it as kinetic friction from the word kinetic it is moving so along the way while the particle travels there is there's always a kinetic friction for a rest object we have the so-called static friction now if you divide the the amount of force that you applied to to the object which is equivalent to the frictional force so if you divide the friction by the normal where the normal is actually the amount of force between the two object in contact so if you place an object then there must be a normal when we say normal it is always perpendicular to the plane where the particle travels so the contact provides a normal so if you divide the the frictional force by its normal we call that as the coefficient of friction okay so since we have two kinds of friction if you divide the static friction by the normal then we call that as coefficient of static friction if you divide the kinetic friction or the friction between object moving then by the normal the result is the coefficient of kinetic friction and that friction that coefficient is actually the property of material in contact so it depends upon the material which means that if we have a wood moving on the horizontal wood wood on wood we have the coefficient of that friction based on that condition of material okay so we have also another coefficient of friction for for another material like glass okay so glass are smooth so therefore, it has a lesser amount of friction. The smoother the surface, the smaller the coefficient of friction. And take note that coefficient of friction is always less than 1. Why? Because the frictional force is always less than compared to the normal force. Okay? So, that's it. So, if you divide the frictional force whether static or kinetic by its normal the answer is the coefficient of friction and this is the property material if is the amount of force applied but this is proportional to to the coefficient of friction divided by the normal force the normal force again is the force between contact so therefore because friction is a force so we need this for the dynamics no and we are solving problems and if we apply if we apply the newton's law in 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 everyday life now take note that friction is always present friction is always there where there are uh, objects in contact so if you are calculating the amount of friction so you can transform this one diagonal product then friction is the mu or the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force so the requirement of to obtain the friction is we need the coefficient of friction by its 
normal force. Okay. So, take note that N is the normal force. And this is the exerted by the contact surface of the object. So, for example, we have the horizontal plane. And we have this object, M, lying on the horizontal plane. So, take note that, that the object whose mass is M provides a gravitational force. Okay? So, we have the weight downward because weight is always directed towards the regions of the earth so this is directed towards the regions of the earth and this is the gravitational force weight the force that the earth exerts on that object and in contact to the surface we have the so-called normal so the normal is always is present only when there is contact between two objects in this case horizontal plane and the object on top of it has a contact so therefore there must be normal without contact there's no normal force so in other words if we have the normal force we have the frictional force at that surface okay now if the normal is is upward okay vertical then the friction is always horizontal because they are uh, 90 degrees in 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 difference of the angle so the angle between the normal the friction is always 90 because I'm because take note that the normal is always perpendicular to the plane but the friction is in line it's the same uh, line with the plane so it's parallel to the plane but it is always an opposing force okay so if you apply a force let us say pulling pulling force P towards the positive X so you apply the force on it and there, there is a contact between the object, then friction is present in the contact surface. And it is always opposite to the applied force. And the amount of force, if, is actually uh, mu times in. Okay? So, with that, we have the... Therefore, there are four forces when the object is actually placed on top of the horizontal. And if you apply a force here, then there, ma there are four forces. The weight, normal, applied force, and the friction. So again, why is it that we have friction? Because we have contact. Yeah? If we have the contact, then we have the normal. Then normal provides friction, always. Okay, so what will happen if we have inclined surface? So if we place the object on top of it okay now we overlay this Cartesian and we will apply a force on the positive x-axis now take note weight is always downward so therefore there must be an angle from the assigned y-axis we have this angle with respect to this axis okay and we have also and we have the component we have the component along this axis y and we have the component along along x for w now, in this case, in the first figure, the weight is always towards the negative y, and we have the positive y's normal force. Now, in this case, now, the question now is, if we incline the plane, where should be the normal force? Okay? Now, remember that the normal force is, look at the definition, the normal force is exerted by the contact surface to the object. So, it should be what? Perpendicular to the surface, always, in contact. So... In this case, our normal is was inclined, and this is directed towards still in positive y because we inclined Cartesian, but the W is always vertically downward, so it must have the angle. By the way, whatever angle here will be the same angle as this one. Okay, so if you apply a force, if you apply this object up the plane, then friction is what in opposite direction. If this will move upward, then friction should be downward. If this object will move downward, friction must be upward because it is always an opposing to the direction of the motion of particle. Okay. So, now, what will happen if we remove this force? If we did not include this force, so what will happen? What is the tendency of this object? And what will be the direction of friction? Okay. So, we have this object and we have the weight. Okay. And we have the normal. So, the question now is, where is your frictional force directed? So, in this case, remember that we apply a force, a pulling force upward that results 
motion raised object upward, then friction should be downward. Now, in this case, there is no application of the force upward, so therefore, the tendency of this object is to move down the plane. In other words, friction must be upward, up the plane. Okay? Because friction is always an opposing force due to the motion of the particle. Okay? So, this is actually friction. So, remember that in, in Newton's law, we need to provide the net external force. So, the net external force can be obtained only if we know all forces acting on the object. So, friction is part of the friction, a uh, force of the applied to that object. So, therefore, it must be reflected to the drawing of all the forces. Okay? So, uh, again, therefore, we need to know what is free body diagram. So, the first, the most important part of the solutions in Newton's law is the free body diagram because it is where that we can find the net external force. So, remember that the second law says that the net external force is equal to the product of the mass times the acceleration. So, therefore, we should know what is the net external force. And we understand that the net external force is the resultant of all forces acting on the particle. So, if you sum up all uh, geometry, if you sum up geometrically all the forces that acts on that object, then the result is net external force. Okay? So, that's why we, we need to know what are the forces that acts on the object. If there is one or two missing on that drawing, if you did not include other forces, then we cannot say that it is an it is a free body diagram. So therefore, the result is you will be you will be calculating a wrong external net external force. So the key factor to find the net external force is to construct the free body diagram. So a free body diagram is a diagram showing all forces. So all forces must be reflected. Okay? acting on the body or a particle. So, in our previous slide, these are actually the so-called free body diagram. So, if you place an object in horizontal, then we have four forces. The weight, look at this one, the weight is downward, which means we have, by the way, when you are constructing free body diagram, you should have the Cartesian plane. So, in this case, because uh, we have this as horizontal, so we can assign x here, horizontal, and vertical is vertical is the y-axis. So, we have four forces, the weight, the normal, the applied force, and the friction opposite. Now, in this case, we have, again, four forces. We apply the force on, on, on above, uh, uh, up the plane, that causes this to move, okay? then the friction must be in opposite. But if you apply a force, but still the object will move downward, then friction will be the same direction as P. So this is case-to-case -case basis. In this case, we know that this object will travel this axis. That's why I assign this as positive x-axis. So the, the secret here to overlay the Cartesian plane is make sure know the direction of the object. I mean, prior to solving, uh, solving the problem, you should have the idea on where the object travels. So, if you know the direction of the of the object that travel, then assign that as the positive x-axis for simplicity of the solution. Because, because if, if the particle travels on that axis, then surely the net external force is into that direction of, of that axis. So, in this case, I assign this as positive x because I know that this object will travel in this axis. So, therefore, the net external force is along positive x-axis. In this case also, we have this positive x-axis. It's because that, why? What? This is moving towards right. Now, in the third period, look at this one. By the way, uh, x here, because this is moving, by the way, this negative x. So, x must be down uh, uh, This in this one direction. So, down the plane is the positive x. So, in this case, our net external force is, again, always towards the positive x-axis. So, kindly correct this one. This must be negative x. Okay? So, that's it. Uh, as far as the free body diagram is concerned, these three figures satisfies the condition of having a free body diagram. So, with that, 
we can understand the net external force. So in this case, where is the direction of the net external force? The net external force is always towards the positive x-axis. Why? Because remember, friction appears only when its magnitude depending on the amount of force applied here. Okay? In static position from rest. But if it is moving, if it is moving in this direction, so surely this force depends on the material in contact. So it must be this must be less than compared to the amount of force. If this is moving towards X. So in this case also, I know that the net external force is along X. So therefore, we need to find only the P value and the F value of the friction. So if you subtract this two, the resultant must be the res uh, the, 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 the difference will be the result will be the resultant. Okay? So in this case, the net external force is going downward. So take note that W has a component along X and along Y. By the way, uh, if you after constructing the free body diagram, all you need to do in order to separate the forces along X and forces along Y, we need to resolve all forces that are not lying on the axis X and Y axis. Then after that, we can sum up all forces X, sum up all forces along Y. Then after that, you can now apply the Newton's law. Okay? So, by the way, in this case, if, uh, if you choose this as your x-axis, so as, aside from you know the direction of the net external force, another advantage of having that is if you sum up all forces along y, the sum should be zero. Okay? The sum should, there, there is no net external force along y in this case because no way that the object will travel up, up the plane or up the positive y or down uh, negative y okay it cannot move upward and move move down the negative y axis the only way is to move it's either move downward down the plane or up the plane so therefore along y must be zero so therefore we are very sure that the net external force is always along that's it that's the secret of providing or or solving problems in in dynamics of motion okay now because this topic is uh, how to obtain the free body diagram so since the free body diagram is the most important part so you have to analyze clearly the problem so in this case if the problem says that what are the forces acting on this object let's say refrigerator or whatever object after applying this one so if, if this particle travels in this direction because you apply a force the only way to move this one is actually move in this direction. No way that this object will move in this direction or move downward or upward because no way to move downward because we have this horizontal surface, ground surface, and this object also will not move upward. It's because of gravity. So there must be a contact between this object. So the only way that this object moves is only towards the this axis. So with that, all you need to do if you are constructing the free body diagram then you have to overlay the Cartesian. Take note, I assign this as positive x. So in that case, we are now very sure that the net external force is along this axis. That's the secret. Okay? Now, according to Newton's law, whatever the direction of the net external force will be the direction of the acceleration because they are always the same direction. Okay? So therefore, you know already the direction of the 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 force so you have now the idea the direction of the acceleration okay so then apply uh, one force is the pulling force P then we have the weight downward take note and weight is mg now in contact to the surface is normal because now we have the contact then we have there must be a normal force upward and the frictional force is in opposite direction. And take note, this is mu times and depending on the amount of the coefficient of friction. Okay? The coefficient of friction can be static or kinetic coefficient of friction. So if there's no uh, uh, in, given that it is static or kinetic, they can, you can use generally that the friction is mu times n. Okay? So with that, we are constructing the free body diagram. So, if you have this one, you are actually solving 50% of the problem. Or more than 50. That is 60% of that. 
if your free body is correct, then you are already along the way to answer the problem correctly. But if this one, this free body diagram is not the free body diagram because you ignore some forces, then you will not arrive 100% to your answer correctly. So that's why very important is the free body diagram for the solution of the uh, Newton's law application problem. So this is the free body diagram of the furniture. So in that case, look at this one to analyze. So, if you sum up along, along y, this must be zero. Because this is in equilibrium situations. It should be at rest along y. Because it won't move upward nor downward. Okay? So, the force must be zero. So, what are the forces along y? The forces along y are normal. So, normal, positive, weight downward, minus. So, sum up this one, the sum should be zero. So, in other words, you can solve for the normal. And the normal in this case is equal to the weight, but the weight is equal to mz. Okay, that's it. So, you know already the normal. By the way, we have, be sure to have the n normal, because take note that friction is mu times n. So, if you, if the problem says given the coefficient of friction, multiply it by the normal, which is in this case, it should be equal to the weight, but the weight is mz. So, we can always solve for the value of force. Okay, then after that, you have to sum up all forces along x. Now, this is where we are uh, concerned of because we know that the forces along X is not zero. In fact, it is the net external force. Now, the net external force, remember, has the formula in the Newton's law. And it is the product of this mass of this object times the acceleration of that object. So, if we know the net external force, then we can always solve for the acceleration. Now, mostly in the problems in dynamics, is actually solving for the acceleration. So, therefore, net external force should be obtained. Okay? In some few some cases, uh, given the acceleration, then you can solve for the net external force also, vice versa. So, with that, we need the amount of P. So, depending on the problem given, and friction, take note, is mu times N. So, with that, we can solve for the... Uh, 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 the acceleration or, or whatever anon. Why? Because take note that if the net external force along X or the force along X will be the net external force. So we can assign this as if so this is it. The net external force is equal to forces along X but force along X is PX minus F. Okay? So F is mu times N. So this is the net. Then equate this to second law formula. Then that's it. Okay, look at this one. There is a note here. Note, if the pulling force is less than friction, what will happen? If your applied force is not enough to overcome the friction, this object will not move. Okay? But take note that this friction depends on the amount you applied. This would not be equal. Uh, this would not be greater than P. But the moment you increase the amount of P, this friction also increases. Okay, if you continuously increase the amount of P, then this force attain its maximum amount of friction. Because the friction, remember, depends on the contact of the surface. So therefore, if your applied force is now greater than the friction, then this object will start to move. That's it. Okay? Uh, okay, so that's it. We have... We are already constructing the free body diagram of uh, this object, and we should always hold all the forces that act on that body. That's why very important because these are actually the solutions to the problems in uh, dynamics of motion. This is that's already leading to answer. So that's why I say that if you are constructing the free body diagram, you are more than fifty percent of the solutions to arrive the correct answer. So, you still have to struggle the algebra here. Okay? So, this one. So, construct the free body diagram. We have the object, and this object was applied by this force, applied to this man, but it was inclined at a 30 degrees angle. And this object moves in this direction. Now, construct the free body diagram. So, how, how uh, to construct the free body diagram in this case? All you need to do, Again, remember you apply the force here, so force P. Okay, then 
the weight is downward to what else because we have the contact so there must be a normal and the normal take note this is horizontal so the normal should be upward against and perpendicular by the way the normal force is always against the contact surface this is object against is this one and this is always against and perpendicular to the surface so that's it now if we have the if this is not a frictionless surface if we have if the problem says that it has a friction with is a friction then we need to include the friction and it, it should be always mu times n so very important to know how much n because without the normal you cannot compute for the friction that's why if there's a contact there's a normal if there's a normal there's a friction if there's no contact there's no normal there's no friction because friction occurs only during contact surface between two objects okay so uh, these are the forces but we need to overly by the way we understand that the force the net external force is in direction because this is according to the problem so the acceleration also the same direction so with that you need to overly the Cartesian to be positive X why because to ensure that all forces along X must be our net external force okay so we call this as the free body diagram of this box so by the way because P is not along X along Y so in order to continue solving this problem we need to resolve P and take note our angle is uh, X is adjacent to the angle so therefore this must be cosine so P cosine of 30 that's it if this is given then we can solve for PX then the Y component of P is upward take note of that so in other words this is very important this is a critical part no? because we need to evaluate whether this object is really in contact with the surface why because uh, because we don't know if this force the py is much enough to to what to handle the weight take note if this if this p is greater than w then there's no contact or if a py is equal to w then n is zero so if it is zero then it follows there's no contact so if there's no contact there's no friction so in other words this drawing is already is, is a wrong property diagram if that's the case but if you really know understand that this box will travel in this direction even if you apply the force here then that's it there must be a normal there must be a normal okay so this is actually these are the forces that acts on the body so therefore this must be the free body diagram of that box so again if you sum up all forces along y the sum should be zero because this is by the way not necessarily static this should be in equilibrium there are two kinds of equilibrium remember we have the static equilibrium and we have the dynamic equilibrium so generally uh, you can ignore this static this is for equilibrium reasons so in other words the all forces along y should be balanced balance to zero so if you sum up all forces take note that forces n is upward so this is positive this is py is another positive and w is downward so if you sum up this three the sum should be zero okay for there are contact if this is non-zero then there's no contact okay so with that sum up all forces along y by the way we in this case you can solve for the normal force because p if is given then you can solve for py always and that is sine p sine of 30 and w is mz and this is the sum should be zero so transpose everything then you can solve for n now another process is to sum up all forces along x this time forces along x should not be zero or else if this is zero the object is at rest now the fact that this object is traveling in this direction along x so there must be a net external force and that will be the net external force which is equal to the summation of forces along x now what are the forces along x we have only two forces the component of p along x and the frictional force p is positive friction is negative so therefore this must be p positive if is friction is negative so substitute the values p take note is if given p with an angle 30 this should be cosine so p can be calculated 
uh, friction is mu times n. So, mu is given, then you have to compute for the normal force from here. Then substitute. Then you have the net external force. And you can solve for the acceleration. Why? Because second law. The net external force is the product of the mass times acceleration. And the mass is given. Uh, net external force calculated from the free body diagram and you can solve for the acceleration. That's it. Okay. So, you can do it. So, net external force, take note. And this is P sine uh, cosine theta. And this is mu times n where n is taken from that. So, you can solve for the net external force. You have the mass. You can solve for the acceleration. Okay. By the way, look at this one. There's a note here. If if the sum of full forces is not equal to zero, what does it mean? If the force is not is not equal to zero, which means that P is now is greater than W. So in that case, this drawing is invalid. Why? Because there's no contact, there's no friction. Okay? So that's it. If they are equal still, there's no friction because if P is equal to W, then there's no friction. Or there's normal. So if there's normal, there's no friction. Meaning it floats on the surface. There's no contact. So again, this is a wrong answer. So that, that's why we need to ensure that is this really moving along X? So to investigate is to sum up this one. Okay. You have to investigate the PY versus W. If PY is greater than W or equal to, then that's it. But if PY is less than W, there must be normal. When you look at the drawing, we are actually uh, downward was actually applied by two forces upward, the normal and the P. So P must be, PY must be less than to W in order to have the normal. So, if there's normal, there's contact. Okay? That's it. Huh? So, these are the free body diagrams of the... Um. So, this one. What will happen if you have this one? So, very simple. So, the object is moved along the plane. So, all you need to do is to overlay. By the way, X should be in this direction. So, you have to incline your, your Cartesian to ensure again that your net external force is along this axis. So that's the secret again in in solving problems and you will now you will now uh, actually uh, understand that the net external force is along along x and along y again is zero always in that case. So that force weight take note by the way if this is thirty uh, if this is twenty degrees this is also twenty degrees geometry. So you can always solve for the component of W along Y and along X. Again, because that we have the contact, the normal should be in this direction. And friction should be in opposite. Then, sum up all forces along Y. What are the forces along Y? It should be F cosine of 30 degrees because this is inclined 30. Positive. And then, minus friction. And normal, what is normal? Sum up all forces along Y and equal to zero. So, what are the forces along Y? We have the component of W along this axis. The normal is along positive x-axis. This F component has the component along Y. And it should be what? Sine. F sine of 30 degrees. So with that, we can now resolve. We can solve no force along X, then equal to 0. Then we can solve for the N. And N should be applied to this one by multiplying mu to become friction. That's it. Okay? So the free body diagram of this object. So we know that the net external force is in direction y because we assign this as x and the problem says that this is moving along this axis so very obvious no? that this object will move upward or downward so x must be along this axis so with that the acceleration is also the same as the direction of b very important is the law of uh, second law of newton because whatever the direction of force will be the direction of the acceleration vice versa Every direction of acceleration will be direction of the force. So we are, it's very clear that force is along this axis. And it has also the acceleration along this axis. So resolve the component along y, along x. And with that, this third 20 degrees is the same as here. So we can resolve this, solving for w, y, w, x. That's it. So these are the free body diagrams. Okay, let's apply this problem to 
to double system, double object system. So the problem says that in the horizontal table, we have these two object, and at the end of the table, we have the frictionless pulley. And in a pulley, we have this square that connects mass A and mass B. And this is, it has the surface of the table has a friction of 0.20 kinetic friction. So mu K is 0.24. Take note that the coefficient of friction is also less than 1. The coefficient of friction is always less than 1. Why? Because it is mu is F over N. F is less than the normal always. So in this case, this 24% is actually the coefficient of friction between the friction and the normal. Okay. The problem says that what will happen if we have the 6 kg on lying on the table assigned that as mass A and the hung object which is connected by means of a cord and this is a frictionless pulley. So uh, don't mind with the friction here because it is negligible. Then the hang, hanging mass is 8 kg. So this is greater. So surely this object will move downward. No way that this object will move in this direction. So the tendency is to at rest or maybe down, down, downward. So if you if you have no idea whether it is at rest or 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 moving, now you can assume direction actually. Okay. Now if you uh, if you assume that this is moving in this direction, then be consistent. There must be acceleration. Okay. Now if you calculate then the acceleration is zero. What does it mean? Then, this object is at rest. Okay? So, that's it. So, in this case, we are asked to find what? Find the distance between two bodies. So, therefore, between two bodies, when it travels after two seconds. So, that's what. That's it. How? What is this distance after traveling two seconds? So, whatever this distance, take note, is the same as this one the same time because simultaneously they are connected so initial time final time initial time final time the two objects are the same so displacement must be the same also now how to compute this one now if you apply the kinematics again what are the given informations the given is actually the time and the initial velocity is zero what else we need three we need a new two so in order to complete the given data in order to apply the kinematics we need to solve for the acceleration and the acceleration can be solved only using newton's law but take note that what we have two objects what will you do how how will you deal uh, this kind of problem if we have two simultaneous objects they are connected remember so the net external force are affected so how will we apply the Newton's law in this case. So the answer is, all you need to do is to analyze it one by one. So construct the free body diagram of the mass A, which is lying on the table, and construct the construct the uh, free body diagram of the object mass B. Okay? Then take note that the key factor there is whatever acceleration that A travels after two seconds, it's the same acceleration of object B travels at 2 seconds also. Which means that uh, we can create an equation involving what? Involving A here. But we cannot solve. Okay? Uh, but remember, another object is another set of pre-body diagram. So meaning, we have another equation that involves A. Now remember that when you analyze the forces on A, we need the tension of the cord. And we don't know how much is the tension. In other words, if you, if you construct the pre body diagram of mass A, you involve two unknown variables. And they are what? The acceleration and we have the tension in the cord. Now remember that the acceleration will be incorporated to the equation because we can re equate the net external force on A in terms of the acceleration and its mass. So therefore, if you continue solving on using the free body diagram of A, it will involve acceleration and tension on the cord. Now, take note in third law, whatever tension applied to the object here of A is the same tension 
that is applied to object B. Which means again, that if you do the free body diagram, then continue solving, then you have two unknowns here. So in the other word, you are creating two equations with two unknowns. And the unknowns are A and T. That's it. So again, all you need to do to solve this problem is to construct the free body diagram at of mass A. So then next is B. Okay, let's us start A. Now, steps on how to construct the free body diagram. First thing to do is, look at this one. Uh, analyze where's the direction of A. Mass A after two seconds. Where is the direction of displacement? So the direction is in this process. Along horizontal, right? Okay. So assign that as the positive x-axis. To ensure what? Again, our previous slide. To ensure that the net external force is along this direction. So with that, what are the forces? Weight downward, negative. Normal upward. The tension in the cord is positive because this is positive x. Now the friction is negative in opposite side. Okay, then acceleration now is in this direction. Okay, why? Because we understand that we have this. We assign the x to be our net external force of mass A. Take note, the net external force of mass A is not equal, necessarily equal to the net external force on mass B. It depends upon its mass. If we have the same mass, then the same acceleration. But different masses have different uh, net external force on each other. Okay. So, with that, okay, we have we already constructed the free body diagram. All forces are reflected on the object A. So, next is what? The free body diagram of mass B. So, think of the direction. Where should be the, the direction of B after two seconds? So, you have to do it consistently. Take note that this object A will move horizontal, then this object B must be downward. Okay? So, in other words, X should be downward. So, look at the assignment of X. I choose here X because I want to make sure that the net external force is along X. So, with that, what are the forces? Weight is in Z, in B, must be in Z, of Z. Then, uh, we have the nor uh, no, we have no normal force because there's no contact. Okay, so instead we have the tension in the cord upward, and it is minus. By the way, this is minus T cord, represent the tension in the cord. This is positive T cord. Because remember, this is the action, and this should be the reaction force. The action force must be what? The same magnitude but in opposite direction. So one is positive, the other is negative. They are equal. Take note of that. So this actually third law of Newton. Okay. So we are done with the pre-body diagram. So we are now sure that the acceleration again. By the way, the acceleration here is the same as the acceleration of the object. Then the net external force of B is not equal to A. Because they are of different masses. Okay. So then we will now do the mathematical processes. Start with what? So, we will start at mass A, pre-body diagram mass A, then we will provide equation A, equation 1. Then, go with the mass, uh, mass B, use the pre-body diagram, then you will undergo an equation, uh, let that be equation, equation 2. Involves what? The acceleration and T. This also involves acceleration and T. So, the two equations now become simultaneous. And we cannot apply the algebra using the simultaneous equations. So then, so you have to sum up all forces along y. So what are the forces along y? Weight, okay, downward, normal is upward. So, because this is equal to zero, then we can solve for n. And n now is equal to wa, but wa is mag. That's it. So the purpose of summing up all forces y is to solve for the normal. Why? Because normal is important to the friction. So with that, sum up all forces along x. Okay, do it. Sum up all forces. What are the forces along x? It should be T chord. And we have the friction minus. By the way, this net external force is actually the summation of forces along x. The for forces along x is actually the forces, net external force on A. So with that, 
substitute the friction becomes mu in but in take note is mg mass a times g so again this is net external force so we have to use the newton's law that net external force should be what the mass a because we are talking about a times acceleration so different for the friction uh net external force of b because b is must be times a so the same a but different masses so for now we are still on a so with that uh okay substitute these values substitute this mass a to to what mass a times a to summation of force along x which is our net external force of a so this is now the net external force and this tension of cord is this one and this is mu n but n is what mg mg mag so leave this as equation y one why because we don't know a and we don't know tension mu is given okay m a is six kilograms punya g is 9.81 so therefore that's it uh okay there are two unknowns in one equation so you cannot solve in algebra this will provide an infinite solution if you, if you do it so preserve that because we still have the another drawing so another drawing another process another equation so equate to zero along y for static or or balance okay what are the forces along y by the way along y is there's no forces along y so surely this is zero so static or balance equilibrium now summation of forces along along x is t chord upward and we have the mass b which is the weight b take note mass b so uh, okay then substitute this one Summation of forces, take note, this, this is net external force for the must be. And substitute the value, take note with this. Second law. So substitute it here. And we are now creating equation 2. So again, T chord, MAG, uh, MBG. And we have this second law, the moving mass times A, which where A is the acceleration. Uh, since A is unknown and T chord is unknown, so leave this as equation 2. But take note, equation 1, A is unknown, T chord is unknown also. So, the two equations are simultaneous equations. So, apply the algebra. How to how to do it? So, since we have 2 by 2 matrix, we can eliminate one at a time. So, we, I can eliminate T chord. How? Adding this 2. If you add this 2 equation, equation 1, equation 2, algebra says that we will, this will be cancelled out. So, we can now solve for A. Okay? So, if you do it, so I, I give you the, uh, to analyze this one, adding this one, this will result in this, this process. So, I hope you can, you can do it. So, if you add equation 1 and 2, you can eliminate T chord and you have now A, solving for A, is equal to MGB, MBG minus mu MAG over the product, uh, the, the sum of the two, MA plus B. That's it. All of these are given, take note, given the problem. So, you can do the substitution, do it, then the answer is 4.6 meter per second squared. This is the acceleration of the double system. One is horizontal and the other is hung. And they are both uh, passing, the cord is passing through the frictionless pulley. Okay, so that's it. So, since we already know the acceleration, we cannot solve, by the way, the, the problem does not require the acceleration but you cannot solve for d without acceleration remember uh, again the next is you are asked to solve for the tension in the cord you can solve for the tension of the cord look at this one if i substitute here the acceleration this one a then you can solve for t cord actually okay so or uh, by the way i think this is this is not the answer okay this is not the answer because equation one okay equation one is so all you need to do okay uh, i i have a typographical error here so use equation one look at this one this is your responsibility substitute here any equation one or equation two substitute it here a then solve for t chord it is the same as if you substitute it here then you will arrive t chord which uh equation one equation two must provide the same value of t chord please do it on your own because i committed mistakes here i am using equation one but it's lacking of information here so x this is not the answer but 
for letter B, letter B, let's answer letter B, distance, we need to pick up the given initial velocity 0, this is purely kinematics, T is 2 seconds, then A is what? A is 5 point, no, this is again, this is 4.6, kindly, okay, I have mistakes, a lot of mistakes, so this must be what? This must be 4.6, okay, and this one is a wrong answer because you have to use the equation 1 correctly, so our equation 1 is not this one, okay, so then uh, I think uh, the next is Okay, then, from kinematics, use this formula, substitute this value. Okay, eh, okay. Uh, substitute this value here, 4.6, substitute to acceleration, and time is 2 seconds is here, then you can solve for the problem. This is 0, the initial velocity is 0. So, it is purely 1 half A, 4.6 times T, but T raised to, raised to 2. Okay, so that's it, No? So, again, uh, I committed mistakes here because I used 5.61. So, change this to 4.6 and this is not 11.22. This should be less than 11.22 because this is less than, uh, this is 4.6 only. So, okay, that's it. So, as uh, anyway, the, the, the most important part is you have the correct acceleration. Please do the corrections on your own. So if I were you, resolve, solve, solve this again on your own idea, then continue. Then uh, provide the, your own answer. And make sure that we have the same acceleration. And this one, uh, you can now correct this tension in the cord with your, with your solution. Okay, so that's it. So for your practice, in order to incorporate your ability in kinematics and dynamics so I challenge you to solve this one the object will move here from A to B this is dynamics B to C under dynamics then after this this is projectile motion so the question is actually in the bottom part question what is the total time traveled from point A to point D so you this is a good problem because this involves kinematics and dynamics of motion. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for listening. So, uh, see you on my next video.